So in this video, I want to talk about Breitenberg vehicles. Uh, they are named after Valentino Breitenberg, a German uh, neuroscientist, uh, pictured here. Um, and he wrote a book called Vehicles. Uh, there's the cover of the book there. And here's a picture from the book. And the basic idea in the book is that uh, you can get very complex and intelligent seeming behavior even from very simple neural circuits. So you can see these uh, vehicles just have a, a couple of neurons in them with a couple of weights and a simple kind of coupling to their environment. And from this very simple setup, you can get agents that seem like they are attracted to light, agents that seem like they don't like light. Now for a long time, I've been studying these kinds of Breitenberg vehicles in Simbrain. And so here is the one of the pursuer simulations. And you can see it looks a little bit like this picture. Um, it's not quite the same, but uh, fairly similar. And what we have here is a left and right sensor that respond, um, that correspond to these two uh, sensors. And when the cheese is on the right of the agent, there's more activation in the right sensor than the left sensor because the cheese is closer to the right sensor. It's closer to the right sensor. And as a result, there's more activation in turn right, in the turn right effector node than in the turn left effector node. Okay, we could just iterate a few times to see this. So it's closer to the right, and so there's more activation here, 0 0.6 versus 0 0.5. So the turn right sig node has an activation of 54, and this just has 42. And so this differential, this differential of about 12, sort of net right turning of 12, or net turning of 12 to the right, you could say, um, makes it turn in the direction um, of the object. Um, and it works, right? So if we run this, uh, it really seems, I mean, it, it pursues the cheese, and it seems to like the cheese from this very simple system with just five nodes, two weights, and five couplings between this environment and this uh, neural network. Okay, so let's build one of these simulations from the ground up. So let's make an odor world, and we don't need all this stuff, so I'm going to delete all these guys. Um... All right, so we've got one cheese and one mouse, and if you want, we don't even we don't need that central sensor, so we could delete that if you want. Okay, and so now we've got these sort of essentials. Let's make a uh, neural network here, and let's start by making two sensors, and I'm going to label those uh, left. And uh, let's now look at this cheese object and. Let's give it linear dispersion. Let's give it a dispersion about 170, 170 pixels. And let's just make the first component of the stimulus vector be zero, or one, and everything else be zero. Okay? And so now remember that objects um, emit a kind of stimulus vector, and that each sensor could respond to every component, right? Every entry in that vector. And we want them, since we set the first component, or first entry to be one, uh, we want. Uh, uh, couplings to the first entry in these smell sensors. So we're going to do right right click on this node and receive scalar coupling from Odor World 1, Agent 1, and then smell right. So we want the right sensor. Um, and then this is the important part. This first uh, number one is what we want to respond to the first entry of that smell vector. And we could just test this right away. And you could see it does indeed uh, react most strongly when it's right on top of it. Um, for left, we're going to respond to uh, smell left one. And so now we should have a basic simulation in place. And so now it's responding more to the uh, on the right sensor and less on the left sensor because it's closer to that one. And now it's responding more to the left sensor than the right one. And that differential is what we'll be able to use to make a pursuer and avoider Breitenberg vehicle. All right, so we've got our sensor squared away. Squared away. Let's make some effectors. So let's make nodes that um, turn. And let's connect the left cheese to this one and the right cheese detector to this one. That's using the one, two trick. So I select one and then select this and press two. Um, and uh, we can just give it a quick look. And it, indeed, we've got more activation on the right uh, effector. And so if we make this turn the vehicle, 
uh, turn the agent, then it should sort of turn in the direction of the cheese because there's more right turning than left turning. So we'll have a net turning towards the right. So let me uh, send scalar coupling to. So now we are creating, now this is the producer and this is the consumer. So we're going to send a coupling to Odor World 1 and turn right. And this one we want send scalar coupling to Odor World 1 and turn left. Okay. And so now we don't have any forward motion, but it should just kind of. Uh, rotate in place to orient itself towards where the cheese is, which indeed it is doing. All right, so fairly simple to get this nice kind of stable behavior. Um, and now all we need to do is add some uh, forward motion. And the way I typically do it in these simulations is just to make a node. And uh, I'm going to make it clamped. So This is something that I will manually set the um, degree to which it goes forward or backwards. I'll give it an increment of 5. So now when I click the up or down arrows, it goes up in increments of 0.5. And I will couple this to uh, forward motion, so go straight. All right. So now if I run this and I add some activation, uh, it should orient towards it. Now you'll notice it's not quite turning as vigorously, vigorously as we might like. And so what you could do here, and it takes a little tuning, is uh, you could increase these weights. So right now they're both set to one. So I'm going to select them and I'm going to click Command E or Control E. And let's make these strength of two. And I don't know what the max on these is. It might be one by default. And so let's give it a upper bound of 10. That'll give us a little bit of leeway here. And now we'll have a little sharper turns, and maybe we could do better. Let's just do this intuitively. So I'm going to just click up a few, select those, and click up a few times, and yeah, now we get something that looks looks a little better. All right, so that was pursuers. Now ask yourself, how can we make this be an avoider? How can we make it so that it avoids the cheese? It doesn't like cheese, or actually, to make it a little more realistic, what's something it might not like? Uh, we don't have a cat in here, but poison, let's say so that it, it knows that's bad for it and so it'll avoid this poison. Oh, I, I already labeled these cheese. Okay, we're stuck with cheese. Uh, make a different kind of cheese. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't like this kind of cheese. And so to do that, ask yourself, how can we do? How can we make it act like that? Well, what is the behavior we want? All right. so right now it likes cheese. It's a pursuer. But how can we make it be a cheese avoider? So, um, Right now, if it smells the cheese to its right, it turns right. And if it smells cheese to its left, it turns left. We want it that when it smells cheese to its right, it turns left. And when it smells cheese to its left, it turns right. It kind of does the opposite thing. And so one way you could do this would be to make these inhibitory. And then you know, a right cheese, more right cheese would make this sort of do the opposite. Instead of turning right, it would turn left by uh, reversing the signal. But an even more intuitive way to do it would just is just to make these sort of cross connections like this. All right. So now when the cheese is to the right, uh, it's going to have more net activation towards the left, and so it'll turn to the left. And so we have a simple avoider now. All right. And as we did before, you could uh, make this a little stronger of a reaction just by selecting these and clicking up. Okay. So now it's going to turn a little more. Uh, sharply, Let's max it out here a little, and now it really, really doesn't like uh, this cheese. And in fact, in currently unpublished work with Scott Houghton, who appeared on the introductory SimBrain video in at least a text comment, um, we've been look, doing a mathematical analysis of pairs of Breitenberg vehicles and looking at all the kinds of behavior you get. And here's kind of an example here. You could get them kind of like this is one vehicle and another vehicle, and one of one of them is doing kind of this, and the other one's doing this, and they're both kind of moving in a straight line, but moving in these circles. Um, and there's just it's just amazing the variety of behaviors you can get in the system. Let's see if I could find another picture here. Um, you get yeah, we call these uh, revolving type relative equilibria, and you get these kinds of uh, flower or spiral patterns or meanders as we call them. And in fact, you can get meandering patterns with arbitrarily many 
of these kinds of petals, as it were. Um, and so uh, let's take a look at this. We actually created a script to kind of study the system as part of writing that paper. And uh, this is included with SimBrain, so um, you can um, call this uh, Breitenberg.bsh script. And now we're using these um, simplified agents, not mice. And if you run this, you could see they are um, sort of revolving around each other. And this is a stable kind of equilibrium. If we perturb them a little, um, you know, they'll orient for a second and then go back to revolving. Again, we call this a relative equilibrium. This is a revolving type relative equilibrium. And we put in a few parameter values here that allow you to see some of these more complicated types of motion. So uh, I haven't done this in a while. Let's just let's try it. Heart shape sounds kind of fun. Let's do that. So 20 and 25. Um, and you know what's going on here is that you know we've got a four-dimensional space of all possible weights across these two, or across the two agents. So each agent has two weights. So there's four weights total. Um, but we focus specifically on the case where they both have either the same weights or one agent has the reversed weights of the other. So if this is like 10 and 1, this one would have 1 and 10. And that creates these two-dimensional subspaces of the four-dimensional weight space. And this shows you, depending on how you set the weights, uh, you know, if they're both, say, like you have a 1 and then 0.1, then you're in this region of that subspace of weight space, and then you get a particular kind of revolution or uh, re revolving type relative equilibrium. And then if you're in these sort of areas, um, depending on which kind of ray you're on in this area, you get these different kinds of revolving meanders uh, with more or less of these uh, petals. Okay, so anyway, let's try this uh, heart-shaped one. So press pursuers, then reverse. Uh, okay, and let's take a look. Whoa, okay. So there we go. That's the heart-shaped uh, meander, um, or the heart-shaped translation, I guess. If, if it didn't have this wraparound structure in the world, it was, presumably it would just keep doing this forever. And yeah, okay, there we go. And that looks a little bit like uh, one of these. We call these translating type relative equilibria. So it looks a little bit like one of the ones I started with down here, like something like this, okay? Um, so this actually, our, our mathematical studies of, of pairs of Breitenberg vehicles, we feel really confirms Breitenberg's basic insight that from this very simple type of system, this incredible wealth of behaviors emerges. And uh, you saw in those pictures briefly, there's all these different kinds of ways they could behave with respect to each other. And this is just one among many.